Further divisions loom in the ruling All Progressive Congress as the debate hits up on who will be Nigeria's next president come 2023. And the floodgate seems to have been opened. There are calls for more review of Nigeria's Supreme Court's judgments. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. The Lagos State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has stated that the former governor of Lagos State, party's national leader, also that's the APC, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, is qualified to lead the country come 2023. This has come in barely two days after Senator Sani Yerima, who previously expressed his interest in running for the 2023 election, said President Buhari will not endorse anyone for the elections in 2023. With me in the studio is Dami Adibayo, public affairs analyst. Thank Hello. you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. We'll be joined uh, via telephone uh, by legal practitioner Liberoso Shoma um, as the conversation uh, proceeds. Let me start with you. Um, putting him, he, his pedigree and everything, that he's a good candidate uh, for uh, the presidency, is this the right time for the conversation, do you think? Um, right now, I think it's way too early as well. I mean, we know that, you know, two years before the elections, politics starts and governance stops as well. But right now, I think the conversations are being had a bit too early. And I think it shows the um, levity in which um, people take the business of governance as well. Uh, Yerima is saying that the, there, there seem to be, have been an agreement between um, Tinubu and Buhari as part of session on the other side saying that um, uh, Buhari has said he will not endorse anyone. Uh, I think, one, I hope he means he wouldn't endorse anyone in the party primaries because if we know that the AP, if the APC wants to function, if it does want to run as well, there's no way that the Buhari endorsements wouldn't, you know, um, count for something in 2023 as well. Sinubu, the man in question, has yes. not indicated or said anything publicly. Yeah. Uh, in fact, as I said last check, he said it's too way too early to be talking about the uh, presidency come mm -hmm. 2023. But isn't, uh, some are saying this move, the APC chapter in Lagos, let's be clear about that, is mm -hmm. those in Lagos that are calling for that, they're saying, um, is it a subtle way of easing us into the conversation or pulling us in a picture that this man is going to run for 2023. I'd like to believe that he's a much smoother politician than that, to have his, um, well, the local wing of his party probably front this as well. And again, I have a feeling that there are elements within the party that are probably over eager and, you know, want to pledge allegiance or show allegiance um, to the cause in itself. Because there's one thing that we need to remember as well. The reason that the APC is a formidable force in itself is because it's been able to curry a favour in both regions of the North and the Southwest, at least as well. So what we're saying is, you know, there would be no, it'd be hard to see an APC victory without the Southwest. And it'd be hard for, you know, whoever's coming in the Southwest not to have the buy-in of the North as well. Is Yerima a stakeholder of the party in the North or is he as strong as he thinks he is? I doubt it as well. So these are issues that I don't think, you know, anyone should be responding to as well, because he shouldn't be able to, he wouldn't be able to garner a significant force to challenge the Southern West wing of the party as well. But again, like I said, the party is, the tough battle is probably going to be the party primaries as well. Um, the discussions about zoning are going to be really interesting to see if they actually do zone. We certainly will get to that <laughs> because Earl Rufai spoke about that. Well, let's get to Boris um, into the conversation to hear his thoughts. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, quickly, uh, the APC chapter is saying that Tinubu has everything uh, needed to be the next leader of this uh, country. Um, is it too early in the day? Yes, uh, you said um, the APC said Tinubu has uh, what it takes to, to be, be the next president, president of the president. country. Yes, they are calling for him to um, take on that uh, responsibility. And the question is, is it too early in the day for such a conversation or it's smack on time? Yeah, um, I, I didn't get it so clearly, but I think I can pattern the the issue. If it has to do with the government's president, the people's presidency, um, he, for me, I believe um, he is qualified. I haven't been a governor of Nigeria. Uh, the, the government, I haven't been a governor in Nigeria. 
is eminently qualified to contest for the highest office in the land. But uh, my only reservation in all of this is the fact that the party, because the Supreme Court had said that the mandate belongs to a party, and the party came and sold ideologies to us. And so one would have expected that we should even be talking about performance. We should be talking about um, the benefit of the next level idea that the government took to us. And now all of the candidates that are coming out and wanting to vie for the presidency come 2023. Is it an admission on the part of the party that this current government has failed? And so they're making it look as if they are, they are distancing themselves from the pattern administration of this government. And that you now hear all kinds of government uh, and uh, those who are qualified and who throw their weight behind. Uh, election no longer on the basis of performance or, or just mere qualification. There are so many, almost uh, we have a lot of Nigerians that are qualified. But we should preoccupy ourselves first and foremost with the promises made to us by the party, and then how well have the party said in terms of delivering those problems. Um, That's basically my concern. Yeah, you, 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 you talk about issues, but the truth, as we know it today, is that zoning um, is a key factor uh, when it comes to who becomes the president. Um, what's your take yeah. on that? When it comes to who becomes the president, first and foremost is the party who nominates a candidate. And then it is time for the people to accept. They are, they are for the people to accept whether that candidate, you know, would be able to deliver on the basis of the, the, the ideologies of the party or whatever. The issue here, first and foremost, that whether Tinubu or the candidates that are angling to contest on the platform of APC. The first question is, do we have, as we speak, can we conveniently say that APC has delivered and promises they made to Nigerians on the basis of the campaign that we had with them or the social contract we had with them in 2016? The, the, the line is um, breaking. Uh, we'll try and, and get to you again uh, in a bit. But I want to bring the same question. Um, uh, the barrister talked about the importance of, you know, checking what we use as criteria for people that will be president uh, in this country. But the issue of zoning is there. El Rufai, the Kaduna State Governor, has come up as early as yesterday to say that um, it should be zoned to the southern region of this country. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Because even if it's going to be based on, you know, antecedents, maybe mm -hmm. the person's uh, leadership skills mm -hmm. and all of that, they still have to follow the zoning principle. They don't have to follow the zoning principle. They've chosen to follow the zoning principle. And I think those are two very um, important divisions as well. We need to remember that it's the fact that we, if we wanted to follow the original zoning principle that the you know PDP introduced, it was zoning across the six geopolitical regions as well. So it wasn't simply divided into the north or the south as well. The you know PDP was willing to let it go from the northeast to the northwest, and it was balanced in a way. It was either the northeast and then the it was a southwest president, and then a northwest president, and then a south south president, and then a. But you get the general idea. The fact that they wanted to move it across the geopolitical zones now, um, so that was their principle. That was their policy principle. No one calls for it, as well. And um, but this the is just idea good politics behind for it. The yeah. idea behind it it's was to give a sense of belonging to every region of the country, so that there is no. Um, what do you, do you call it now? Um, Favoritism. Exactly. Yeah, Obasanjo lost the Southwest in 99 and 2003, and he ran as someone from the Southwest as well. So again, you know, so if those are the benefits, it doesn't mean that they wholeheartedly welcome you as your, the representative of the zone. Okay, um, let's see something that um, El Rufai said again. Um, he said there was a deliberate omission of zoning in the ruling APC's constitution. Yeah. 
Um, he, however, noted that the ideal thing was for the Northern APC to sit and endorse someone, mm -hmm. especially after the um, eight years that Buhari has spent mm -hmm. um, on the throne, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, do you see that happening, that the North will actually give room for someone to be picked from the South? So, Like I said, I think it'd be good politics if they did it. I'm not saying that it's probably the... Um, it's probably the step forward, or it's definitely going to be the step forward for, you know, um, relations between both zones or inter-party relations as well. But it's good politics in the sense that you, you want to keep the southern wing of the party happy so that they do not leave, because if they do leave, it's going to be harder for you to see an election happening as well. But at this point as well, you're starting to see um, the party looking at its options outside the southwest as well. There's a lot of activity going on in the south-south. There's a bit of activity going on in the southeast as well. Um, if those things are actually going to come to fruition between, between now and 2023, no one knows as well. But the good thing is to keep your allies while they're your allies and you make them happy, implicate them, and give them the things that they want. <laughs> okay, um, I don't know if we have um, the barrister on the line again. Okay, um, well, I guess we'll have to move on with the conversation. So I'll just um, make a reference to something a former um, military um, ruler said, Ibrahim okay. Babangida. He talked. <laughs> <laughs> he, also was, he also was in support of the zoning uh, issue. Maybe, maybe the man that has, you know, probably taken off a few nice elections away from us shouldn't be the one we turn to for democratic advice. But, yeah, you know. yeah, I, I get your point, but he is also an elder statesman in this country. Again, to listen to him. <laughs> Again, this divisions, I think we attribute a lot more importance to these people than they're worth as well. And I'm sorry to say this as well. There's a whole generation of people that, you know, know of Baba Gida, but would probably not be able to pick him up from a line pick him out from a lineup as well. And these are the people that are currently voting as well. So whatever he says or he doesn't say doesn't matter as much as we think or they or he probably thinks it does as well. So I get the sense that he's an elder statesman and he has opinions as well. But if there's one thing that, you know, the 2019 elections have told us, that elder statesmen and their letters, you know, don't count for much when it gets to the polls. Okay, so <laughs> let me just make reference to what, actually why I was bringing him into the conversation. Sure, go ahead. It has to do with the Igbo presidency. Okay. There's been conversation about, okay, it's time for the Igbos to come in. And mm -hmm. he's waiting, even though Erufai did not mention the Igbo presidency. Mm -hmm. But what's your take on that clamor? Are they ready to take on such responsibility? I think everyone is ready. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that there's anyone of any ethnic tribe that could have done um, either as terribly or as good as, uh, you know, the presidents that we've had as well. So I don't think our problem has been, you know, representation as well. Obviously, I do understand the fact that the Southeast has been marginalized as well. When we look at infrastructure, when we look at representation as well, we do understand that there's a lot of work that we have to do to bring the Southeast in as well. Is offering them a token presidency the solution? I'm not sure as well. But we, we do need to consider the fact that um, there's a huge demographic imbalance. It's easier for you as a northerner to, be, to become president. Probably slightly easier for you if you're in the southwest. Slightly. And when I say slightly as well, it's that there's a lot of deal making and concessions involved, a la 99 and 2003 as well. Um, in the southeast as well, there's the distrust and it's a historical distrust as well between them and, you know, of other groups to them as well. I mean, there was a civil war that was fought as well. So it's hard, you know, for us to act like these things are not in play as well. But like I've said, the, the political strength that is needed to win on a national level is something that we have to see emerge from the region. And it's a politically competitive region as well. You have the PDP, you have the APGA, you know, starting to see the APC by the courts. Um, but like I said, these are, um, I think until there's consolidation, until we can point to a regional party in the East and we can say, oh, this is the regional party of the East. I think that's probably where the PDP has let them down as well. Because considering the fact that this is um, one area that turns out, you know, for the PDP relentlessly in the national elections as well, it's um, possibly something that should come to play. But if we're saying we offer the token presidency to one ethnic group, I'm not sure that is the solution to marginalization. Because again, you might probably just be seen as the puppet of, you know, whatever ethnic group is believed to have put you into power as well. Okay, let's uh, bring that. I, I understand we have uh, Liboris on the line again. Are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, I want to refer back to um, Sunny Yerima. Uh, he has indicated interest as well for the 2023 uh, presidency, and he's also described as false um, comments that there was there is an agreement between Buhari and Tinubu for the presidency. But 
looking at the two of them, with his antecedents, what do you make of his comment? Does he have any chance at all? Yeah, um, if you look at um, a sentiment aside, really, and the um, non-delivery of um, uh, promises made aside, yeah, um, Tinubu is, a, is an astute politician that you cannot underrate. And when he takes on an assignment, he looks through it and will want to work with it to the end. He only bounces down when the signs are very clear and obvious that he cannot attain that assignment, uh, the, the, the end of that assignment. If he truly means to be president of Nigeria after this um, uh, Buhari's era, by now, I, I think he would have been trying to create synergies and blocks. And um, if I can, I could hear your guest in the studio very well also. Some areas he might have challenges would be in the north and the southeast. The southeast desperately are angling to produce the next president come 2023. Even though some are saying that there is need to restructure the country first. And some also have argued that if you want to restructure, why don't you aspire to be the president and then you can restructure from there? So, but Tinubu had, you know, long ago signified interest to govern the country. At so at each point he had backed down, maybe looking at the signs are not too clear, or if the signs are not too obvious, that he's going to clinch it. And they also he was instrumental, we all know, to the alliance between, you know, his party and the CPC that eventually produced the presidency of Buhari. But one other challenge he might have is the fact that the party also has performed below par in terms of promises made. But if you look at it on the flip side, if a PDP has not been able to provide credible alternatives also. So, and that's why basically what they are doing now is testing the water. But if it's able to create that synergy between the, the Southwest and the north, he might just clinch it if he's given a ticket from his party. Or, or because in the last election, we also saw it in 2016, especially the southeast majorly voted for PDP, and why the southwest and the south north and the, and the north voted massively for APC. And so, what that pretend is that. The major three regions in Nigeria, if you can get two of those three regions, it will be easy for you to clinch, you know, the number one seat. So anybody that wants to, when I say to you or another person, all you need to do is to find a way of building blocks between the southwest and the north, not or not between the southwest and the southeast. Mind you also, Tinubu also has them, some very potent opposition in the southwest. Uh, so it's not yet Uhuru for him, even though he's a international politician, that you know, wants to take on any other you know, he always gets results. But we've seen him also, you know, fall flat in some states in the southwest. You remember what happened in Oyo before now. And we also saw how Osho almost slipped away from from APC. So so all of these are not uh, it's 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 a very tough one to call to say that it'll be an easy right one. It, it won't be that easy. All right, boss. Thank you very much. Um, before I let you go, though, I'll take your thoughts quickly on this particular issue um, of a green horn. Um, since 1999, we've not had any person that wasn't a, some a one-time military um, officer or serve, have served in government become a president. Is it possible for us to have a completely fresh person come to take that mandate? I, I think uh, come um, 2023, it will be difficult for somebody who was a former military to become president in Nigeria now for very obvious reasons. Um, we are still suffering from military and um, As you remember, even while uh, the APC are trying to market uh, General Muhammad Bukhari, he, he was sold as a, a, a recent Democrat, a born again Democrat, 
and that uh, those military mentality, you know, you are no longer the American so, And then also that that idea of military in, in politics or in governance, you know, for 20 years I had gradually and passively win. And so that even you know, there are a lot of people today now, you who were born in 1999, who didn't even know when military were in government in Nigeria, a lot of them have opportunity to vote now. So really they will not be relating with that mentality or idea of having somebody who had a military background. And then finally also, we have seen that um, despite the military background that uh, Jeremiah Dibwari came with, he's not able to do you know, anything different. You know? Um. Yeah, just round up quickly so I can get... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I think we've lost him again, um, and we're out of time. We've lost <laughs> him again, but I, I need to uh, get uh, your thoughts. Sure. Um, he said something about uh, the APC not um, having performed well enough for mm -hmm. people to say, okay, um, we should go back to them. What's uh, your uh, opinion on that? Between now and the next election, do you think that there are things that the APC can do to raise their credibility so that Nigerians can, you know, reconsider whatever option or doesn't now it doesn't really look like it's the candidates that really matters but the party as well mm -hmm. um the economy like definitely as well i mean we're growing but it's a very it's minuscule compared to our population growth as well and that is something that they need to fix as well i mean it's you can see a lot of repositioning going on but again there's not enough urgency or there isn't the body language to match you know a lot of the things that they've said um that they would do as well security i mean we we need to be real about the fact that the northeast that problem isn't getting solved could that know. be a deciding factor in the next election i mean I have there a, is no improvement i mean we did see the president visit you know maiduguri and gets booed as well and that is you know a stronghold i mean when we talk about buhari's 12 million votes we know the areas that we're talking about we're talking about the north and if they're getting dissatisfied that maybe buhari's endorsements might even be an albatross on the neck of whoever um it gets to as well we also need to talk about the fact that the repression of the media, civil society, and the use of the courts is something that is worrying as well. Um, especially in certain regions as well. If I felt like, so we're talking about the Southeast that feels ostracized as well. So if we felt like this man that we've never really trusted and we haven't really voted for has done all these things that um, seem to be hostile to us as well. It's not something that would win him a lot of favors. And I, I find it very hard that whoever is going to come through in the APC ranks is going to be able to distance themselves from that as well. Um, the one corruption is all fair and dandy, but I feel like people have lost the enthusiasm over the fact that petty corruption still occurs. High level corruption might be tackled and it looks like there might be some resolution with some landmark cases as well, but it hasn't met the same fervor that you know um, people had initially. So right now the economy and the security is probably the, those are probably the pillars they need to work on. So much to talk about, whether it's the right time or not. The conversation is upon us, and uh, we'll continue to take a look at them as they unfold. Thank you so much uh, for your thoughts well. so far. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we return, the People's Democratic Party refused to accept defeat. We'll talk about that later. Still, that's.